Hi, I'm Jesse. Set up this LEGO City today so we can look at modulars. So we can review all 33 of the LEGO modulars. Now, if you're a LEGO fan, you'll know that LEGO didn't make 33 modulars. They made 18 so far as of this filming. So what are we gonna be looking at? Well, I've always had a bit of a different collection. I've always enjoyed and had no qualms about buying off-brand LEGOs. So what we'll have here is a mix of the Lego modulars and other buildings, a few of which are by Lego and which really should be modulars but aren't really officially part of the series, and mostly uh, a lot of them by off-brand companies that have been doing some really wonderful work. And if you haven't branched out to explore some of those other brands, I really recommend it and we'll see some really great stuff today. So I'm excited to tour the city. I'm excited to show you uh, the different modulars and you know as always let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree or if you think it's blasphemous to be mixing these in with the lego ones uh, let me know let's get started counting down the 33 best lego or kind of lego modular buildings okay starting off with number 33 pet shop it was the sixth modular released and i have to say a lot of these early modulars are lower down on the list which I guess is good. It means that they have improved over the years. So that's good news. Pet Shop is nice that it has two halves. It's split in half. And if we walk around here, we can take a look at the city. I just knocked over a water tower. Uh, we can take a look at the other half here, which is a nice little brownstone um, with a fancy sports car parked outside. But, uh, you know, there's a bay window. There's a little awning. There's a little lawn, kind of. It just looks like dirt. Um, you know, I have to say for a lot of these uh, ones lower down on the list, that's not to say I don't like them at all. Um, I love all the modulars, but when you rank them, some of them are going to be near the bottom. All right, number 32, we have Cafe Corner, the modular that started it all. This was the first one, and it gets a lot of points for being so revolutionary and for being the first one of its kind, but it just looks boxy it looks unfinished all the exposed lego studs it had no interior um the clever skis to make the logo was kind of cool to make the sign you know obviously a lot of sort of innovative building things here for the time but i don't think it has uh, aged that well unfortunately number 31 is the green grocer and like the Cafe Corner, this is one of the four modulars that I don't have. I think the combination of them not being my favorite and them being really expensive now is a pretty good reason why I don't have them. Um, again, just like the Cafe Corner, this one just had a lot of these exposed studs. The, the green color is nice. The curtains are nice. The interior of the grocery shop uh, was well done. And this has a little tunnel that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, it, it just doesn't really hold up. Okay, number 30, we've got Brick Bank, the 11th modular released. It's pretty nice. It's got these uh, really authoritative looking columns, really nice detail on the windows, beautiful skylight at the top. And this was one where it really struck me about the story. The story was really prominent. There's a <laughs> bank robbery in progress. There's a little laundromat here that's super cute. And uh, the joke is that they're laundering the money right from the bank through the laundromat. And this little little girl on the roof is going to solve the crime. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think the colors are that exciting. Uh, the clock here is kind of nice. Um, and while the detail is good, it just doesn't, I don't think it stands up to some of the newer modulars and some of the other ones. Number 29 is the Palace Cinema. This was the eighth Lego modular and a real departure, really sort of innovative, interesting thing. It's really cool. Uh, the roof is really nice. The sign with the brick built letters is cool. All of the movie posters are pretty neat, although they were stickers and apparently everyone hates stickers for some reason. So that's a big no, no. I haven't figured out why. The Walk of Fame stars, really cool, but the interior, was such a small letdown of a theater. I think that was a little disappointing. So all in all, some some really innovative, interesting parts, but uh, not not too high up on the list for me.
Number 28 is Downtown Diner. This was the 13th modular released, and if you're familiar with it, you'll notice it looks drastically different here in the city because it normally has the giant word diner in huge pink letters right in front of it, and I didn't like it, so I took it off. And because I didn't like it, it's sort of why it's lower down the list. Despite really cool um, sort of 50s style design, the interior of the diner itself is impeccable. Really, really nice. And there's a, a boxing ring that's really nice too. Um, but the, the top of the building just isn't that exciting on the left here. And the giant diner sign just... I didn't like it. It made the whole town seem like a diner. Um, but this right-hand part of the building is really beautiful. It looks like a jukebox. And it came with a car. The car is really nice, this little pink car. It, it's got some really nice parts. Um, and it's a really interesting design in some places. But uh, not, not my absolute favorite. Number 27 is this corner flower house. Um, it's really nice. This is the first off-brand one we're looking at. Nice thing about the off-brand Legos is they're a lot cheaper. They're generally just a lot cheaper and you still get a great value. This one has no interior whatsoever. It's just empty. So maybe you get some points off for that. But the different sides are really nice. Let's come around a little bit here. The tan and the blue. Just really cool and it's got flowers dotting it all over the place. And the uh, tile on the sidewalk is nice. One other thing about this garden house is it came with this little outdoor garden. Really just like a little beautiful, tiny little garden with a tree. And by the way, here's one I decided not to count as a modular, but I have it here displayed in the city anyway. It's the uh, fisherman's shop. It is uh, pretty beautiful, but I really don't think you can count it as a modular. Number 26 is the brand new Jazz Club. Yeah, if you were watching to find out where this place is on the list, it is here kind of near the bottom of the list. Um, I have to say there are two parts I really like about it. I like the Jazz Club sign a whole lot and uh, some of the other printed pieces down at the bottom here, uh, the different signs. And I really like the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse with a little chef up on the roof and I think it's really nicely done, really clever. But the rest of the building, and you've got a little band practicing on the roof here, like a little uh, Beatles concert. Um, the, the rest of the structure, I just can't get past the colors. I just think the blue and the brick red and the yellow are just not a good combination. And with all the gray and dark colors with it, it, it just feels dark overall and nothing really that new and exciting. As for the interiors, the jazz club itself is nice, but then you've got a whole floor just for a dressing room and a whole floor just for an office, and there's not really that much exciting going on there. The pizzeria is fine, they have a little restaurant, but uh, have a much nicer off-brand pizzeria, actually. Sorry, Lego. Um, so yeah, jazz club was a little bit of a disappointment, despite having some really nice parts, like that sign and the, and the greenhouse. Number 25 is Corner Garage. Corner Garage has some nice parts. I don't think the color is that exciting. Uh, it did come with this uh, cool little truck, which is pretty nice. And it has a garage and it has a veterinarian's office. It says Dr. Jones Animal Clinic, no snakes. Little joke. It's just not that exciting a building. This was the 14th modular released uh, and it's an interesting sort of corner, sort of angle that they've done, but it leaves some gaps on the side. And yeah, the gas pump is okay. A lot of empty space. It's just a little odd, not my favorite. Here we have number 24, the fire brigade. There were a lot of nice things here. I really like the brick built American flag. I like the brick built lettering, the 1932, and the bell is really nice. Also, as a New Yorker, I'm going to love any of these that have the classic New York water towers. They're just really cool. Um, the brick here is nice. For some reason, it looks a little nicer than the Jazz Club. I don't know why. What they did with the helmets here is really cool. And of course, this came with a fire truck, which apparently is not being driven by the firefighters right now. It's being driven by a little boy, so that's pretty dangerous. 
So watch out for that. But um, the, the building itself is really nice. And on the inside, it's got a fire pole. It's got a bunch of stuff. Um, not a bad interior at all. And uh, just really classic. It reminds me a lot of a lot of classic firehouses that are in the city. And uh, it's just pretty nice. Number 23 is this off-brand little house here. Now, this was one of the ones where I was on the fence about including it. It's clearly not a modular, but it is a city home. It has the same sort of sidewalk. Um, it has some similarities to a, a modular building. And I just like it so much um, that I decided to include it. It's not quite the same scale as some of the other modulars. You can see it's a little smaller and it folds in half, it folds up. Uh, so it doesn't have a back when it's open like this. But it gets a lot of points for being the first set I got that had lights. The lights were included and they work. So this little house gets higher up in the list than it would have otherwise. Oh, and back behind the light up building, I've got a 7-Eleven. I'm not gonna count that as a modular here. It's pretty tiny, but so detailed, so cute. Look at the soda in the window. Number 22 is Market Street. The second modular ever released and the only one designed not by a Lego master builder expert professional, but by a fan. And I think they did a nice job. Now, some of the other older ones were near the bottom of the list. This one's closer to the middle and it gets a plus from me for this space on the left. Now, this might be totally unfair because normally this would be a big minus because they gave us just sort of this empty space. But what I did was filled it and I filled it with uh, a little flower shop selling flowers, um, some groceries, a little farmer's market, and some art, someone selling some art. So having this little thing and, and maybe they built it intending for different Lego creators to use it for their own use, that's what I like to think. Um, and with that filled in, I think it's really, really nice. And the railings on this are nice. It gets points off for not having an interior, but uh, I think overall it's pretty good. It looks like a classic European townhouse, maybe Dutch or something. And the, the stairs in the front, the sort of spiral, two sets of spiral stairs are really cool. And uh, it has some nice details for being such an early one in the list. Numbers 19, 20, and 21 are three sets called European Garden Street. They're very similar and they look incredible put together and I can't differentiate, I, I can't make a decision which one is which. So they're numbers 19 through 21, these three sets and getting all three and putting them together where these flowers running along them just all connect and the, the black and white looks so starkly different from the rest of the city. It looks really elegant, really beautiful all these flowers everywhere. Um, this one has a little greenhouse. This one's having a barbecue on the top and they have a lot of details on the interior as well. Let's go take a look at the back. You can see in the back of this one, you can actually see right into the room and it is really cool. So all in all, these three Garden Street buildings are just really stunning. Number 18 is the Town Hall. Just look at that, so majestic. The tallest modular, really beautiful. Again, the brick built letters. It just great amount of detail, really cool looking. The columns in the bottom, the croissant crest in the front, um, the clock. Every town needs a town hall. This one does a really good job. It looks really sharp uh, and just really majestic and, and powerful. Uh, the brown is really nice, some nice details, but nothing nothing too exemplary, but it, it earned itself a place uh, near the middle of the list here. Number 17 is the Grand Emporium. This one holds a special place in my heart because it was my first modular. It's pretty incredible. And I remember getting it and displaying it, I think in my living room and having one of my good friends visit. And I was like, look at this. Isn't this the coolest thing you've ever seen? And he was like, well, it's the coolest Lego thing I've ever seen, which I thought was very generous of him. Uh, but it's just a really cool shop. It's really nice. The flags are cool. The The top sign is kind of, it's pretty funny with the Lego face. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous. But the letters shop are really cool. It has a revolving door 
An escalator on the inside is really nice. Um, it's a little repetitive near the top. The top two floors are the same, um, but the detail is really cool. I can see this being uh, a, a real city building. It's reminiscent of Macy's or something like that. And uh, lots of nice little details. Number 16 is this botanical garden. This is another off-brand Lego one, and it is stunning. It was also one of the hardest ones to build because you had to shove all the plants into it and then try to get the glass on top without knocking them over. But it is just really, really beautiful. Look at all the little gold filigree on top. It's just really neat. And the variety of plants and detail on the inside is remarkable. Uh, just really, really cool. Of course, I built it next to my Lego park. This one's not ranked on the list because I completely made it up, but I'm really proud of it. Uh, just every city needs a park, so I, I built this little park here next to the Botanical Garden. Okay, number 15, this Italian villa. You are in for a treat with this one. I mean, look at it. It is incredible. It is unlike any other modular building. It is not a Lego one. It is very off-brand. Um, and this one was so bizarre because it was by far the hardest Lego thing I've ever built. It was impossible. All of the things are at weird angles. They're, they're barely held together by a thread. I, I added in extra pieces for support as I was building it. And then in order to transport it over to this table, I had to super glue parts of it. I have never done that before, but I got out the craggle. I had to do it because it was just falling apart. It's very, very fragile, but it gives it a lot of really incredible detail. The, the roof, the different roofs are just remarkable. What's really weird is what they've done in the back. So let's go around to the back of it. It's unfinished in the back, but kind of finished. So you can see the back here. They put some details in, like that top floor has windows and stuff, but the side is totally open. And there's little awnings and windows down at the bottom. You can see how hard this was to build. I don't know if you can see, but there's a whole sideways. This, this whole part is just at a 90 degree angle. This thing is barely holding on and doesn't have a back. None of this has a back. These are just actually hanging on to these little hooks here, and there's these weird double windows. The whole thing is so bizarre, I just love it. It looks wonderful from that one front angle, clearly designed to be displayed from that one angle, and everything else is just really, really strange. But look how beautiful it is. Also, here's my uh, spot in the city with some food trucks. The taco truck is spectacular, just really hilariously cool and the taco spins when you drive it. Number 14 is Dr. Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum. But wait, not the modular one. This was the first one. Yeah, and because I got this first one, I didn't get the bigger modular one because it seemed a little redundant. So if you want, pretend that that one is here on the list. But really, this one I absolutely love. It's got a sign that says Bleecker Street. I used to work on Bleecker Street for years, actually several times. So to see this and to see like a New York pizzeria and a fire escape and the water tower, it's just so New York. And as a New Yorker, I just absolutely love it as this sort of authentic Lego set. And I actually extended the front uh, sidewalk so that it matched the other modulars, but it's got just this really authentic detail that makes it feel like a real city. Here's America on the fire escape. Um, look at the, the boxes. There's trash. It's, uh, it's so New York. A little slice of pizza. Just really cool. Number 13 is the detective's office. And of the four that I don't have, this is the one I really miss the most. And I just haven't been able to get it. Uh, it's, by all accounts, really cool. It's got a, a pool hall, which is ironic that I don't have it, having this whole city built on the pool table. But it's just really neat combination of a couple buildings with a little tunnel, some stairs, the walkways. The interior of the pool hall is particularly nicely done. Um, just the, the story that went with it, the characters, 
um, it's, it's just really nice. I think one of the nicer modulars that Lego has done. This was their 10th. Number 12 is this music store and coffee shop. Actually like a little combination of buildings. This is off brand. Um, what I really like about it is this path down the middle. Just this overgrown sort of rocky path, some stairs, just like this neat, fun little play area to walk through. Um, just really reminds me of an old, old city. The roof here, this sort of special red roof is kind of unique, really nice. The way they've done the plants here, pretty cool. And uh, just some details, it's just unique ways of using the pieces that you don't often see from Lego. Um, and here's James Bond, random. Maybe he's picking up a guitar. Number 11 is Assembly Square, the 12th modular and one that's still on sale today. It must be pretty popular. It's really nice, just really cool. It's, it's the biggest one. It's, it's the size of uh, a modular and a half. And it's just a combination of different stores the florist shop, the bakery or pretzel shop. I remember it being difficult putting these sideways garage doors in for windows, um, but the whole thing is just really well down, done. The fountain is really nice. The corner cafe is reminiscent of Cafe Corner, of course, and uh, really fleshes out the whole city and gives it a real square, a real center that uh, the minifigures can enjoy. Number 10 is Otto, the pizzeria. So this fancy brick oven pizza Italian restaurant, not Lego, again, off brand, but really beautiful. Look at the colors. Look at the detail in the tile roof. The detail around the sides, the, the orange and gold awning, the little signs, those were all printed pieces. There's this glass area at the top is really cool. And in the back, one thing the jazz club didn't have was a very good back. It just had basically nothing, here it is, with a little wood container. But this one has a much nicer wood pile in the back. Look at that. And when you press one of the pieces, maybe it's this one. Yeah, it lights up in the front. So that's the brick oven lighting up in the kitchen. It's just really, really cool. All right, number nine, another off-brand one. This is this stunning coffee shop and house. Look at how detailed and how cool it is and how just diverse and interesting. Came with one of the best trees that I've seen, really detailed tree. It's got this beautiful balcony. Can you just imagine sitting out there and reading how nice that would be? And then another one up here with a whole like garden, um, a whole trellis with all these flowers, this detail in the bay window. It's got a chandelier on the inside um, and it's a coffee shop with all this detail down here um, with sort of an open window area um, in the back. You can see there's more balconies, more detail with flowers. Um, just, just really nice all around. Interesting color choices. Some purple really livens up the city. Some blue and uh, really cool detail. Number eight. All right, we're getting near the top of the list. This is the Parisian restaurant. This is a lot of people's favorite. Um, it's really cool. I mean, look at how in the detail of this mansard roof, you've got croissants. That's pretty clever, huh? Um, you've got that baker admiring his handiwork. And then what is really great about it is this side stairway. There's the waiter and there's the couple in the back having a little special tender proposal moment. That whole story with it is really nice. Look at the detail on the brick of the chimney, the roof, this green, this olive green color is really nice. It, you'd think it might not work, but it works. It works really nicely. Um, and the, the roof in particular is stunning. Just really nice restaurant. Number seven is the Boutique Hotel. 
one of the more recent modulars, one of the most beautiful, really kind of daring design, completely diagonal, um, just at this weird angle and with this sort of whole side area with this creative palm tree, just really neat. And then an art gallery, really cool. Look how nice these, these gray stairs are, like a bulletin board, just a lot of really neat detail. The beige sort of peachy color and the olive green, really the colors are, are one of the standout things here, but also the, the quality, just the smoothness of the whole thing. Okay, number six for me is the bookshop. I've actually never seen this that high on a lot of people's lists. Um, a lot of people have said it's not that exciting. I can definitely see some similarities to Pet Shop, which was very low on this list, but I just really like this. The colors, that bold teal is just really cool. And I think the birch tree is really beautiful. We'll see another one of those in a little bit, but calling it Birch Books, even a really nice font. Um, mine has a, a sticker on the door that says open that my daughter put there uh, to make sure that we knew it was open. But even without that, it is really beautiful. I think they go together really well. They really, those colors brighten up, just brighten up the whole city. And uh, a better job of the, the garden in the front than the brownstone from Pet Shop, in my opinion little leaves on the ground look at that little detail and then books outside that you can browse through like it's the strand really neat okay top five and this one's gonna get me in some trouble this is lego friends which uh usually isn't considered a modular but man it just seems like a modular this is brand new from 2023 and is the downtown flower and design stores and was one of the most enjoyable sets to put together so smooth and easy, maybe the most colorful Lego set I've ever gotten. The colors are incredible. It really feels like a modular. It's got little connectors with Technic holes on the side. Like it's a city. It really belongs here in my opinion. Um, and it's just got so many details that are so nice. The fountain, the rainbow stairs, the nice unity street, the hanging lights strung up. On the roof is a beehive with a little bee. It's really cool. And watering can and the apartment was sold and someone's moving into the apartment and you can pick which things from the design store for them to decorate their apartment with. Really cool. My daughter had a whole lot of fun with that, picking out the different pieces of furniture and things. And the whole thing is just beautiful. I think it's just really nicely done and it does fit in with the city. This really modern half of it, the furniture store is really different, really cool. And I wish Lego would do more modern, interesting buildings, um, sort of totally different, diverse track. Um, and I, I, I think it really works, this triangular motif. Number four is the aquarium. This one is not Lego, but man, I wish they built something like this. It is just really beautiful. What a cool design, the colors, the blues, the, the different subtle shades of blue really looks like water. You've got a shark outside by the door. That's really neat. And the whole thing is just this really cool modern building. And then inside, let's open it up. So you've got a seal area over here on the right. And then this whole display with coral and there's a mermaid inside. You probably can't see it, but there's a mermaid in there. Really cool. There's not many of these I've been opening or looking at the interiors, but this one is just so much fun that I couldn't resist. Look at the turtles, the whole little penguin iceberg area. Just what a lot of fun. Number three is another off-brand set, the art gallery. Look at how neat this building is. It is just so modern so interesting, so intricate, so difficult to build, <laughs> but really cool. It slides open as these two halves and I have them sort of separate here. And that's so we can see inside and I'll show you that in a second, but here's the atelier. Really cool building. 
Let's look in the back, see inside. Look at all the artwork. And there's even a room for like restoration, for art restoration, all these easels. Really cool art museum. Number two, the police station. Wow, this, I gotta say, this earned a couple places because it was better than I expected. I never really got it, uh, it because the, the building just looks sort of ordinary, not that exciting, just a tan color. But then I, I finally bought it very recently and it was the most fun to build. It has a whole story and the story reveals itself as you build, it's so clever. It has a, a, a donut thief because there's a donut shop next door, which on the inside looks exactly like the Dunkin' Donuts next to our apartment. It's got a little newsstand. It's got a whole story about uh, a donut thief getting caught and trying to escape from the prison by digging his way out with a spoon. And there's a bird here with a donut, so maybe it was actually the bird all along. You don't know. There's a murder board on the inside, which is just so much fun. Any, I mean, as much fun as a murder board can be, but... You know what I mean? And the whole thing just has all these fun little details. The the sign for the laundromat that we saw before, um, little air conditioner in the window, just the detail, the vine climbing up the building. There's another water tower over here, which I just love. The whole thing is just, just really well done, really detailed, and uh, it earned number two on this list. And number one is this corner post office. And I'm sorry to say it's not officially made by Lego, but look at the detail on it. It is incredible. Look at this green detail and gold and blue all put together. It is just remarkable. Um, you can see the amount of detail here. It came with a little mail truck, which is pretty cool. And uh, the gold and the yellow, the colors on it, gold, orange, and yellow, and tan, just a huge range. They use little handcuffs here to make it look so, some sort of detail. Um, tusks. The whole thing is just incredible, and uh, I think it's the most beautiful of the modular buildings. So what do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? Do you hate the non-LEGO ones? Are you indifferent? Do you want to rush out and buy them all? Good luck, because they're hard to find. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon for more LEGO excitement.